um, this is a moment in the Word of God. I will take uh, my Bible reading from the book of Psalm 95. In terms of coming to the presence of God with songs of joy, praises, and adoration, joyful noise to the rock of our salvation, and um, that will be from in the book of Psalm 95, from verse 1 to 6. And in terms of appearance, I've got the, the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 7, chapter 5, verse 12. And we need to be uh, mindful of all these verses in terms of appearance, because most of the verses spoke mainly of inward appearance. Our inward appearance in terms of the state of our heart. Inasmuch, God loves us to come before him looking good, showing his glory in our lives. It has to be combined also with our inward appearance in terms of our heart, a heart of purity. If we dress outwardly, and look gorgeous, but our heart is not gorgeous, it's not, it's not sanitized, it's not pure, it's not clean in the, in the sight of God. Inasmuch, he loves us to come before him, looking and showing his glory in our lives. All our outward appearance will amount to nothing. But what I'm trying to say here is that, he loves to see we his children showing forth his glory in our lives, in terms of our appearance, in terms of coming before him with songs of joy, songs of gladness, singing, dancing, worshipping him in the beauty of holiness. And so many, so many, so many, so many Bible verses in terms of appearance. Uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 15, Genesis 12, 7. Daniel 1, 13, 2 Samuel 16, 7, Matthew 23, 28. We've got the book of Ezekiel, chapter 6, from verse 51 to 52, John 7, 20, 24. And Ezekiel 20, chapter 1, verse um, 8 as well. Joel 2, 4. And Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. A lot, a lot, a lot of chapters in regards to appearance. When God appeared to Abraham and gave him promises. And today we all... Everyone says, we are all children of Abraham. But the blessings of God, the promises of God that he gave to Abraham, being the true children of Abraham, extend to us. And in terms of appearance, God appeared to him and gave him those promises. All these chapters spoke about different instances in terms of the state of our heart and appearance of heart. In terms of the appearance of God, when he spoke to his servant, in his guiding, in his blessings, and so on and so forth. Why are we not going to give him the glory due unto his name for all this goodness, bountiful blessings he has given unto us? Well, the promises that he has given us. And the Bible made us understand that his promises never failed. In terms of appearance, he has appeared mightily, even showing himself forth in the midst of the children of Israel. In terms of protection and defense, why won't we praise his name for this? Why will we allow anyone to stop the household of God, the children of God, from coming before God? And be joyous in the in his presence, singing, dancing unto him, appearing before him that yeah, I am Father to say thank you in my appearance, in my source of praise, in my dancing, in my worship. 
in terms of worship, worshiping in the beauty of holiness. Why will we allow anybody to dictate our lives for us and say to her, you do not deserve to be happy? When God said we should be happy, why will anyone say, you and I do not deserve to be happy? Why will anyone say, you do not deserve to, to, to laugh, you do not deserve to rejoice, you do not deserve to smile, you do not deserve to celebrate? When our Father has given us reasons to celebrate in many ways. We live by faith, not by sight. And because we live by faith, because faith is believing what your expectation is unto God, you already believe. When you believe, you will receive. And that is what faith is all about. And because every children of God will live by faith, why can't we rejoice already for all that we are trusting him for, for all he has done. When there is life, there is hope. When he did not, and he hasn't given up on us, why should we give up on ourselves? Why should we give up on trusting our creator? When he said, point blank, that we should put all our trust in him. Why should anyone kill the fire of his jaw in our lives or in our heart? The fire of the power of, of his Holy Spirit. Appearance is part of our worship before him. In every realm, the appearance covers many aspects of our worship. And it is part of our worship, important part of our worship before him. Likewise, if we read the book of um, the book of Psalm 103 as well. A law, a law is in the book of Psalm. If we read about the stories of the children of Israelite, when God gave them victory in the wilderness, they sing songs of joy to him. They sang to him to show appreciation for giving them victory. And likewise, we children of God, we need to, 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 to have that abbey of uh, of rejoicing in him always to be joyous children of God in this household and even in our private lives. In our private lives, in this household, it should become part of our lives. We shouldn't allow anybody to stop us from or deprive us of the blessings that we will receive in singing songs of praise and joy to our God because blessings also come in, 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 in doing so as well. And I will read the book of Psalm 95 from the first verse to verse 6. Psalm 95 from verse 1 to 6. It said, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the head. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. All come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, verse 7, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. You see, I will stop there from verse 1 to 6 and a, a bit, uh, some part of verse 7, because He's our creator, He's our mother, He's our Maker. He created us. If we go further to verse uh, uh, to chapter ninety six of the same book of Psalm, also it spoke also about the greatness of God. It encourages us to come before Him and bless His holy name. 
to show forth his salvation, that because he show he showed us his salvation day after day. He brought his only begotten, he sent him into this world. He was born. He came into the world through his ministry. He showed us the way, the truth, and the light. He showed us the light unto how to come before our Father in the beauty of holiness and worship him. How we can make it into eternal life and not end up in damnation. How we can please our Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, came into the world and showed us this. And afterwards, he was crucified. He died on the cross of Calvary for us. He shed his blood for our sakes so that we can have life eternally. If we go to the book of Psalm 100 also, Psalm 100 says, Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is, the, it is he that hath made us, and we not ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. And verse 4 said, that's Psalm 100, verse 4, it said, Enter into his gate with thanksgiving, and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. You see? It goes on and on. The book of Psalms speaks a lot about praising him, singing to him, coming before God with songs of joy, be the gladness in, in him. Coming before God with our offering, our offering to say, thank you, Lord. In terms of not coming before him empty-handed. It is also part of our offering when we come before him with songs of praise and worship and adoration. In our appearance, we we'll praise him, we we'll worship him also. I have said it in my previous video. So, I mean, because he's a merciful God, for all, all numerous blessings that we have gotten from him, the blessings he appeared and, and, and promised our father, forefathers, Abraham. For his intervention, he has intervened in our case many times. Blessings that we see and the ones we can see. What about protection? The one that we can see and the ones we can see. I mo ye wo no se gbe fo wa da atetari atetari atawa ati atawa ati gbogbo awon tin se ti wa to ja awon eyan wa we and our loved ones many 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 of his goodness his bountiful blessings numerous we cannot pay him back because everything is got the whole world in his hands we can say, oh, I want to pay you for what you have done for me out of what is is. That, oh, I don't want to be debtor to you. We are all debtor to him. Because everything with God belongs to him. And because we are his children, that qualifies us for him. And he gives it to us. Because we are his children. Like a true father will do, will care and nurture and bless his children. Well, for someone to say, humanity does not deserve to be happy. You do not deserve to be happy. I do not deserve to be happy. For someone to say, you do not deserve to experience sounds of, of laughter or joy in your home or in your house. Or the household of God does not deserve to experience sounds of laughter or joy. When our father says contrary, that we should come before him with songs of praise, joy, singing, gladness. 
and he has given unto us authority over our own lives. Is the supreme authority he has given us authority over our own lives. He has given us dominion over all that he created. Everyone deserves to be happy. And we can also relate this to our appearance in the presence of God as children of God. We should come before him showing the glory of God, how good he is to us. I have told my story in one of my videos as well. Now, on many occasions, I was... When I was still young, I was um, in my early 20s. Then I could remember through my mom, the Spirit of God reprimanded me. That Sunday, I just put on anything. It's not that what I put on is um, is, uh, is old or, or, you know, looking so wear, worn out or anything. Well, I just like to throw on something. You know, I just put on anything and I, I, I went for the service. And right there in the midst of the service, the Spirit of God reprimanded me. Why should you come before me dressed anyhow? Is that how much my glory is in your life? And even as a, an, as a full-grown woman, as an adult, I've been reprimanded also. The Spirit of God has minister to me to that don't you ever come before me looking like I see I'm not good to you the appearance tells how much of my glory it is that is in your life and this relates to every children of God as well when we come before God it's part of our service when we come before God radiating his glory in our lives, how much he has been good to us, combined with our songs of praise and worship, songs of joy, singing, dancing in his presence, in, the, in his presence, being joyous in his presence, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it is his will and his commandment that we should be joyful before him. We should come before him with songs of joy and praise. These are all part of our worship. I have said it before. The book of Isaiah, Ezekiah chapter 1 verse 28 and the book of Psalm chapter 100 verse 2 also it speaks a lot, and I will read the two book of Psalms, which is chapter 29 and chapter 100. And I just want to talk about this ideology that is going on, that human beings are not designed to be happy. Everyone, we are designed to be happy. The Bible said there is season. In life, there is season for everything. A season of joy, season of sorrow, season of celebration, season of soberness to be sober, season to plant, season to harvest, season to be born, season to die, etc., etc. There is season for everything. But for anyone to say, that human beings are not designed to be happy. When the word of God said that we should come before him with songs of joy, with instrument, musical instrument, with timbrel, to dance before him, to rejoice before him, not to come before him like as if we are mourning. There is this your body that said, they are like your body, your your. When someone is rejoicing that we should rejoice with that person so that they can come and rejoice with us also. It is the law of life. And it is supported and backed up by God that when you rejoice with others, it's in the Bible, that so that others too can rejoice with you. For anyone to say, human beings are not supposed, are not meant or built to be happy. I think, personally, the person either is a sadist or the person has a serious 
psychological issue. I want us to remember the war of Jericho. I want us to remember how did God brought down the war of Jericho. Now his guardian through his servant. The children of Israel sang songs, they shout, Hallelujah, for the numbers of times that the Spirit of God, the, 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 the Almighty God, directed and guided them to do so. They shout the sound, the songs of Hallelujah, 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 and it brought down the wall of Jericho. Now his power of singing. Songs of praises to God, referencing God in the Old Testament. When God gives the children of Israel a victory, they sing a new song to God. They dance with timbrel, with instrument, musical instrument. Why are we not meant to be happy? Everybody is meant to be happy. Nevertheless, the Bible said there is season for everything. But we are all meant to be happy. And that is why he said we should go replenish the earth. Increase and multiply and replenish the earth. That is a part of his blessings to Adam and Eve when he created man in the Garden of Eden. When he said we should go and multiply and replenish the earth. A man with his woman born of your bone. I'm not in support of adulterous way of life. A man, Adam, has his Eve. And likewise, he has Adam. Every man has their own Eve. Every woman has their own Adam. I won't be in support of any immoral act whatsoever. That is against the Bible that biblically is wrong and the word of God never supported her. In the beginning, when God created heaven and earth, he made Adam and he created Eve next to him that it is no good for a man to be alone. God created man to be man to the core in terms of taking off your responsibility as a man. As the head of a home, as a leader of your own home, as a role model to children, for the people that have children, to your wife as a shining hero with amos. And you can as well say, for a man, your wife is your queen. For a woman, your husband is your king. And that's why the word of God said we should respect our husband and be obedient and reference our husband as well. But notwithstanding, the Bible, the word of God did not stop at that alone. It also spoke to the man that you should treat your wife, your woman, as a precious, precious treasure. Care, nature, love your wife. Like your own soul. Like your own flesh and blood. That is what the word of God said. That is what the Bible said. But for anyone, be it a man or a woman, to think that or have that ideology, that, oh, no one, no one deserves to be happy. No, that ideology is totally wrong. To turn the world to ghost of itself. To turn all people to ghost of ourselves. So that we will not be able to enjoy the joy of the Lord. That he has given to us. That he has given to the world. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. The symbolism of Joy, rejoicing, and joy and happiness is also giving back the gift of life. 
when our Lord Jesus Christ was born, the angels said to the people, the, 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 the people that the angel of, of God appeared to, a joy to the world, for the Lord is born. If we read the Bible, it says we should rejoice because a Savior is born into the world. And that is the symbolism of, of joy, of happiness. When a new baby child is born into the world, the parents rejoice. The families rejoice with the people that had a new born. The world rejoice when our Lord Jesus Christ was born. Even though there are some that are not happy and seek to kill him even as a baby. But God did not allow that to happen. Through his guiding to Joseph, he did not allow it to happen. It's an ideology from the pit of hell. For anyone to say that the humanity, mankind, uh, does not deserve to be happy. He said we should come to, the, to his house, the household of God, with sons of joy and rejoicing. It is, this, this, is, this, this is part of our, our, our worship before him. Not only in our appearance, we can't come to the house of God, like I said, we are mourning, looking, like I said, the glory of God is not in our life. In our appearance also, in our source of joy, dancing unto him, that is how we show appreciation for all he has done for us. Nobody has the money to pay for the goodness of God. The only way we can pay him is in our service and worship to him. And all these things that I mentioned are part of our service before him. But of a new life into the world is symbolism of joy as well. Like I spoke about Adam and him. What did the word of God say about a man that find a good wife? He said he that find a good wife found a good thing, blessing, Favor in the sight of God. And when you found favor, good thing, blessing in the sight of God, what do we do? We rejoice, we celebrate. And that is what give back to marriage, wedding, and people come together to rejoice with you. Because a new union is, uh, is about or has just taken place in the presence of the people and in the presence of God. Why shouldn't we be happy? Why should we walk around like a kind of a, of a, of a, of a, of a zombie sort of? Because some ideologies are coming up that mankind, no one deserves to be happy. When the word of God said, contrary to that, in the book of Psalms, where we read our Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there are lots of examples and instances that indicate and shows that it is the will of God for us to rejoice before him and to be happy. For example, when I mention Adam and Eve, I mention marriage. We remember Cana of, in Galilee, where Jesus Christ turned water to wine at the marriage he honored the invitation he was at the marriage with his mom, his mother, and the disciples. And everybody marries. The Bible said they marry, they rejoice. But when they run out of wine, mother, Mary, mother of Christ said, they're out of wine. And he was like, it's not yet my time. Woman, what have I done to you? It's not yet my time. But being the mom, she said to the disciple or to the people that uh, that stood around that uh, that are supposed to fill in the pot that whatever he said to you, just do because he's the mom. That's why a uh, mom, when they say something evil, sometimes we'll like you know go grumpy because we do not agree with what they said, but we will still kind of reluctantly do what they said because our mom is our mom, and they are our number one teachers. You know, I mean, our parents are our number one teacher. We should rejoice with people that rejoice so that the world, the world can rejoice with us also. Anyone 
that other people's joy makes miserable, can never experience joy, according to the word of God. That will stand as an obstacle and will block the way for that person, between that person and joy. And that is why we have to rejoice with people that rejoice. And it's your bad, and it's all your, your. Because because the joy of the Lord is in is not in that person's life. That is what the Bible says. In continue apart from the Bible so away. Inu yoruba ni to je pe omo yoruba lo mo owe yi It is not the will of God ka wa si wa ju ite olorun ka wa si le ni mo olorun bi eni ta bi eni ti to nso fo ka ma le jo ka ma le jo ni wa ju olorun ninu ile ni mo olorun ka ma le turaka ni wa ju olorun ninu ile ni mo olorun gbogbo awa ta jo mo olorun la mo itu mo pe ka jo ka yo ni waju olorun o ma o ma o ma o ma nje ki ogun olorun so kale ki agbara olorun so kale sarin awon eyan olorun ni ise iya nu ise ara tun ma sele ninu ori kiko ori yin si olorun ati ju ayo si olorun ise wo so gan se ise agbara ise wo so o sele ise iya nu sele miracles happens when we sing with her, with a holy heart, wholeheartedly, and we come before God and we worship and sing praises and dance unto Him. Miracles happen, healings take place. Why will anyone say that another man does not deserve to be happy? Why will anyone say that you or I do not have a right to be happy? Why will anyone dictate my life for me or your life for you and dictate if you should be happy or not? And work towards making sure that you are never happy when our life, God has given authority of our lives into our own hands. It's the supreme authority of our lives and he has given us that power also and the authority through Jesus Christ who is the source of every children of God. He is the source of our happiness. Truly, there are times that we feel so bad, that we feel sad for one reason or the other, for the, whatever it is that is going on in our life. Sometimes we feel distress. And it is absolutely not, it is not, it is, it, it is not abnormal. It's not abnormal to feel that way. Human beings are meant to feel emotion. Thus, for some people to go around with that philosophy that you do not deserve to be happy, I do not deserve to be happy. That ideology is absolutely zero comma zero. To feel that they have the right to dictate and decide your life for you, to decide whether either you should be happy or not. Where is that done when the word of God said that the joy of the Lord is our strength? Why will we go to the house of household of, of God or live our lives like as if we are mourning? A kind of, uh, 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 yeah, as if we are mourning. Why will we worship God and stand in the presence of God as if we are mourning? Why will we dress in the presence of God like as if we are mourning? When we make him proud with our appearance and with our songs of praises and appreciation, with songs of joy, with musical instrument and timbrel and everything, it will make him to do greater and much more powerful things for us. If anyone says that I do not deserve to be happy, I will say to that person, no way. You don't have that authority over my life. 
Only God has the authority. You might have power, you might have influence in this world, but God is the greater influence of all. Is the greater power, is the greater authority of all. And the Bible said, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto him. And I will rain the prayer of hell, fire and brimstone on top on the head of that person. For God to, to, to truncate and put an end to the operation of a person in my life. If it continues or she continues, then that person will have God to contend with. Because he is my creator. He is your creator. The person that is trying to dictate your life and my life, how I should worship God. Or dictate how I should live my life like I should live, like I see I'm, 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 I'm mourning, I'm a mourner. Does not have any authority over my life. It cannot even create a fly. Not to talk of create a human being. It is an ideology from the pit of hell. And that person or those set of people definitely need to be really seriously checked out. Psychologically, they have a problem. The person's heart must have been twisted for anyone to say that. I'm sorry to use that word. I don't mean to be insulted, but that's the truth. Everyone deserves to be happy. Obua, ni anieto, lati ni ayo loru, ati du no loru ni na yewa. That's why, o loru ni eso pe, emi ni mo ni ayo mi, ayo ti jeso fe fu mi. Kose ni kani, abie da ke da, to le ba mi durara, to ri wu kwe jesu lo fi fu mi. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And in the English also, uh, songs also that say, The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Why should a nation, a country, walk around like a without emotion? Because some ideology somewhere said you don't deserve to have to, to smile, to laugh, or to be happy, or show emotion of happiness. You do not deserve to sing. You do not deserve to celebrate. Who are they? Are they God? Can they create anything? Can they match up with the creator of heaven and earth and all there with him? When their afflictions start, we turn to God and cry to the Lord that God, this is your word and I want to live according to your commandment and your word. I want to live in your word. The tribulation, this attack, Father, I want you to put an end to it for me. Truncate all this ideology. Truncate all this beliefs that are, that are it's like affliction. That is spreading all over the place that people shouldn't be happy. Human being does not deserve to be happy. Where did that come from? Is the person human at all? If a person is human and they believe that others should not be happy, then the person needs to be checked out. Even if that person happened to be a sadist, it still needs to be checked out. Because that means psychologically something is quite wrong with the person and if I am not happy it's my life I don't have a right to extend my unhappiness to others by making other people's life miserable and unhappy I might not be happy now but that does not mean it does not determine my whole life that I won't be happy because, like I said, there is season for everything. There is time for everything. Time to rejoice. Time to mourn. Time to cry. Time to laugh. Time to give back. Time for death. Time for, for increase. Time for harvest. Time to sow. And etc., etc. On and on and on. Everything is in the Bible. We all deserve to be happy. So for someone to say, 
No one deserves to be happy. And when the seahorse happy, they will go to extreme hand to frustrate the household of God to frustrate our lives. They use their contact, their influence, because they go around making sure that they have the necessary contact to move and not move. But the greatest contact of all is our Lord Jesus Christ. It's God the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The greatest power of all, the greatest influence of all, and is the greatest influencer of all, is God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When the household of God come before him, we come into the household of God, and we worship him, like I said, we are mourning. Then we need to pay attention. Or we come before him, presenting ourselves like as if we are mourning. Then we need to pay attention. The vices of the enemies from the pit of hell to kill the fire and the zeal of God in our life. To kill the strength of the power of Holy Ghost in our lives. We all know. Every true children of God, every true Christian knows what it means when we sing and rejoice and we shout with songs of hallelujah, songs of praise to God. What happens? The Spirit of God comes down with his, in his full force and he moves mightily among us. Why should anyone try to frustrate that? Then we, as children of God, also we, we need to pray. Like I said in my first video, pray, that is our tool, our weapon of warfare. Pray fervently that God, uh, we, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, prostrate and truncate all the paths, all the gatherings of the enemies from the pit of hell that are working against the household of God, that are working against the nation, that are working against the people of God, and are working against our lives, that are working against our happiness, the joy of the Lord that he has given unto us. We all deserve to be happy. If a man is not happy, that does not mean that it should make all the whole world unhappy. If a woman is not happy, that does not mean you should make the whole world unhappy. It is emotion. Happiness is emotion. Unhappiness is emotion. Feeling distressed or disturbed sometimes is an emotion that has been experienced from, by the people of old and is not something out of ordinary or abnormal. Even our Lord Jesus Christ when he, he, he was at the um, Mary and Matthews, when um, Lazarus died, the Bible said he cried. It's just a few sentences. few sentences in that verse that he wept. In the Bible, our Lord Jesus Christ also felt disturbed. He felt emotion. So emotion, feeling of emotion, people feeling distracted sometimes, or feeling sad, distressed, miserable, for some reason, one reason or the other, is absolutely normal. Normal emotion for anyone and everyone to feel sometimes. And happiness is also an emotion. That God wants house always to rejoice and be happy in Him. No one has the right to say, "Oh, you did not, you did not deserve to be married. You did not deserve to have children. You did not deserve to throw a party, maybe a housewarming party, naming ceremony, just name it, or maybe a, 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 a promotion, and you decide to kind of, you know, make a kind of put together, get together." For people to celebrate with you and you know home and home people have different reasons why they celebrate nobody has the right to dictate our lives for us or dictate to us what we have a right to do or we do not have a right to do how we should live our lives and how we shouldn't live our lives as children of god we live our lives based on the words the commandment and the laws of God. 
we live our lives according to the will of our Father in heaven. Like I said in emotion, my video that I released about emotion, feelings, and reaction, we all deserve to be happy. That is the way God created us. And that is even what if the word of God said. Only Ori Hallelujah. Ori Hallelujah. No more the Jericho Lord just see Hallelujah. Ori Hallelujah. No share me logo. We shouldn't allow the enemies to rob that of us. With songs of praise, with musical instrument and timbre. And when we even come before him, we should come before him, showing how much God is. The concluding part of this video will follow soon. It will be out very soon. Thank you so much for listening, for taking time out to listen and to watch this video. May God bless you all. Please like, subscribe and share. God bless you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.